Hey, how's it going everybody? So today we're going to be doing data visualization in Golang and I'm kind of new to Golang myself. I've been kind of enjoying every minute of it though. I'm really a big fan of this language and it's very efficient and ah, I'm just a big fan of Golang. <laughs> so let's go ahead and um, show you guys how to start data visualization. So uh, first off, this video is going to be split into three parts. So we're going to get the data from a CSV file then we're going to have to map it into uh, a map uh, where the key value pairs are frequency. So how many times something came up in the data set. And then lastly, it's going to be the data visualization part. So we're going to do um, timestamps down below in the description. So you guys can go ahead and jump to whatever part you want to. So without further ado, go to Kaggle.com and you might need to sign up and make an account. But once you do that, it's a, uh, it's a breeze. Go ahead and type in food waste. And the first thing that pops up is Brooklyn food waste. This will be the data set I'm using. It's kind of interesting. People went on dumpster dives and they found uh, foods that retailers thrown away that is edible and completely fine. It hasn't expired. And it just goes to show how many food is wasted in Brooklyn. So once you download this, uh, just click this button, it should download. And you'll see this archive.zip file. You just want to go ahead and extract here. And you'll have the CSV file nice and ready for you. Uh, I already have it, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Uh, if you can see right here, I actually have it right in my working directory. We're going to go ahead and open up Visual Studio. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make the main.go file. Uh, extensions, I don't need that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make our package.main, our funk main. I know I spelled main wrong. <laughs> I just caught it. All right. So the cool thing about uh, Golang is that our imports are going to be done for us dynamically. So for instance, if I'm using the OS module import, uh, or if I'm using the OS module and I don't have it actually being used in my funk main, I can just save and it's going to get rid of it for me. So anything that's not used, Golang just kind of just, you know, kind of parses it out for you or prunes it, prunes it out for you. And that's pretty awesome. It, it optimizes your code very nicely. So uh, first thing we want to do is use the OS module to open this file. So we're going to do F file error in case there's an error actually happening when we open the, uh, the file. And we're going to go ahead and give it the argument of the file name brooklyn.csv and we're gonna have to go ahead and make a slice which is slice is similar to a um, array or a list and if you're coming from Python it's gonna be a string a type string and it's gonna be empty for now um, we're gonna have to handle this error so if error doesn't equal nil we want to do log .fatal because uh, if an error is nil, that means it's great, right? It's no errors, your, your program is error free. But if it's not nil, then we wanna log.fatal the error. And log.fatal pretty much, of course, logs the error. And if it counters a fatal error, it's gonna just terminate the whole program. So um, that's good. Now we want to make a reader. So a reader is what's gonna read the CSV file. So we're gonna say reader.equal, oh, whoops that equals uh, CSV dot new reader and what does it want to read it wants to read the CSV file so we're gonna give it the argument of F and since our CSV file is actually has a lot of quotes here uh, we're gonna go ahead and say reader dot lazy quotes is equal to true all right, awesome. So after we do that, now we're going to have to do a for loop. So we're going to go ahead and make an infinite loop right here. Uh, of course, we don't want that or else it's going to crash our program. We're going to have to make conditionals to break the for loop and then keep going on to the rest of the program. So uh, first, we're going to have to say column and error in case there's an error uh, reading the file. We're going to do reader dot read. And you don't have to pass in any arguments. It's just going to do it for you. Since since you already gave it the argument up here, um, we're going to say if error is equal equal to io.eof, 
and now uh, io.eof means if it's read the whole entire thing so if it encounters an empty line or yeah I guess it would be empty line of the file that means everything's already read so there's no need to keep going and it's going to give you an io.eof um, type of an error so if it equals that error we're going to go ahead and break so that's going to break out the loop however if the error is not equal to nil which is just any other type of error uh, we're just going to do log.fatal it's going to be equal to error whereas the argument is going to be error and if you guys can see all our imports is going to dynamically uh, set for us I'm not sure where the hi they're highlighted red for uh, I don't yeah I'm not sure why they're highlighted red but let's just ignore that for now um, once we have those conditional set uh, we have an escape escape me uh, method to get rid of the for loop but we have to append the data into our list right so we can say data that equals append data and we're gonna say column at five and now specifically why do we want column at five uh, oh whoops we got to do that da data equals because we, we don't want to instantiate a new variable we just want to you know add on to the data uh, specifically why we want column 5 is because column 5 would be uh, this column right here food type and food type whoops food type is what really we, we want and we're gonna go ahead and print that out for you guys so you guys can see so if we want to print this out we can just go ahead and do fmd fmt dot print line and we're gonna print line data all right so if we go ahead and do go run main go, it's gonna go ahead and print out everything in the slice, and all of these are the foods that they found on their dumpster dive. And as you can see, it's quite a lot of food. Uh, however, this is very messy and very janky. So this is gonna be part one of the video. It's gonna be called CSV reading. Uh, now we're gonna move on to the second part. It's gonna be called uh, let's see mapping so mapping the data is going to be fairly easy let's get rid of this print uh, statement so first we want to make a frequency map so frequency is equal to map and then uh, this bracket is going to signify what is going to be the data type of the keys so for us it's going to be string and the value is going to be int so the keys are going to be string and the value is going to be int and we're gonna have to iterate through the slice. So here we did a for loop that was just an infinite for loop. Now we want an infinite. Uh, now we want a for loop that's gonna go through just the elements of the array. Now you can do it. You know, you can do i equals zero. I is less than the length of the uh, array. I plus plus. But uh, GoLang does it a uh, much neater way. It's gonna be like this. It's going to be using the range keyword and there we go that's our for loop uh these i and v it's i is for the index v is for the value but however we're not going to be using the index and to clarify even more um so this is our big slice right i is just going to be zero one two three while v is going to be actually the the value the string value of this so that just to make that clarified um, we're not actually going to be using the index to, so to nullify that we can just do an underscore and you don't have to even use the index now this next line of code is going to be quite similar sorry my cat's in literally in front of me so I might be typing a little slower uh, let's say value and exist exist uh, it's going to be equal to frequency at v so uh, we're passing in a, a key into frequency, right? Our frequency is really empty, so you know it's not going to be, it's not gonna, there's not going to be any keys in there. Uh, let's take an example. Say we put in milk, right? Say we put in milk into our frequency. And let's just, for instance, put that in there. Milk is equal to 1. All right. Say we pass in milk. Value is going to take in the value of 1. And then exists is going to be uh, the value of true, right? So if this if this key does exist, 
value is going to take the value of it and then exists this is going to be true that it means it exists uh, if this was no such thing as milk in there then uh, value would be nil and then exist would just be false because it's not in there so we can keep going uh, let's go ahead and say if exist is true hold on if exist is true then we can say freak at v is plus equal to one so you're probably saying why why is it freak at v plus equal one right it's not even in there how is it going to work well we're going to do another um else statement and we're going to say freak at v is equal to one all right, so that's good. Uh, you see, we don't actually even need the value, so to nullify that, we can do underscore. And we should be fine now. Um, so the way this works, right, uh, it's gonna pass in the first element of the slice. It's gonna say, oh, exists is false, because there's no such uh, key inside the frequency map because it's empty. So it's gonna assign that value of one. And then if it finds that value again inside of the data slice, it's going to plus equal it to one. So it's going to iterate it by one. So that's that's how you do it. Um, to see if this is actually working, let's go ahead and format a print line. And it's going to be uh, freak rent. And let's go ahead and run this, see if it works. Go run main go. And you can see that we have the key value pairs. Uh, we can see the food and we can see the count. Um, it's very, very uh, janky still, but it's awesome though. We have a count of all the uh, variables and they're not repeating because they're, I guess you could say they're unique uh, keys because if the keys are similar, they just add up. Uh, you can see yogurt actually 18. That's a crazy amount of times they found yogurt. So uh, now we want to sort this array or sort this map, I'm sorry. And the way we sort this is quite easy. It's a little actually tricky, but if you follow along, you'll be fine. Uh, we want this sort this in descending order. So descending order means that it starts at the highest value and just keeps going down, 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 just like a roller coaster, you know, a negative slope. Um, the way we do this is we're gonna actually make some some structs here. So under your import, you're gonna say uh, type count struct and we're gonna say um, key it's gonna be a key is gonna be a string and then value is gonna be a vint you're gonna save that all right so this is kind of like a class or or like an object if you're coming from JavaScript it's kind of like an object but it's more like of a an interface of an object um, now we're going to also make another type. It's going to be count list. And this is going to be, um, let me just explain it real quick. Uh, think of this as an array of your object. So count list is going to be an array with a bunch of the count object inside of it. If you're coming from JavaScript, yeah, it would be an array of an object. Uh, it'd be objects inside of an array. And then if you come in from Python, it would be dictionaries inside of a list. So it would be like, uh, let's see. It would be like this, kind of like that, right? Okay, just to make that clear. Now we also need methods because um, just like a class has properties like getters and setters, right? Like you can get a value from the class, set a value from the class. You can also put this stuff into Golang's. Uh, type so let's go ahead and do that so we can say funk and we're gonna say c count list uh, let's see let's see we i think this has to follow a certain amount uh, this has to follow a, a certain interface so we need to do a length property and it's going to be an int meaning this is going to be the return type uh, okay and this is going to be just the name of the function and we're gonna have to do return and then what we're gonna have to return is probably gonna be the length of uh, the length of C right here so we're gonna say length of C alright awesome so we're gonna keep going we're gonna make more 
we're going to say func c count list and this one is going to be swap now these aren't really going to be used but it's just good to have because it follows the interface of a uh, a slice and you need to do that in order to use the sort function which we're going to get to later um, so let's see this actually doesn't have a return statement it just does actions it's like a void function so what you have to do is c at i and c of j is equal to c at j and c of i so it just kind of swaps the values all right and now i think the last one is going to be funk count this and this is going to be less right and then it's going to be j and they're going to be integers it's going to be a boolean and it's going to say return c at i dot value and yeah i'm sorry guys if this is a confusing but you have to do this in order for it to work all right i think we're good we can save that and now we can actually sort the function so let's go ahead and sort the function <clears throat> so to sort the function it's quite quite easy first we have to make our count list uh, variable so to do that we have to just come up with a variable name we're gonna say count why not this count is equal to count list we're gonna say make count list and then now we got to give it a, a certain amount of uh, length that's that's the thing with an array an array has a certified amount of elements it can hold so you're gonna say length of frequency sorry that's uh covering up so length of frequency would be the length and now we're gonna have to do a for loop again so we're gonna say uh for k and v is equal to the range of frequency all right we're gonna say uh p of i okay so we're gonna say first we need a iterator so we're gonna make an i uh, iterator variable and we're gonna say count at i is equal to uh, count which is the pr uh, object that we instantiated earlier we're gonna say count at k and v since the uh, map follows the exact uh, structure of our count struct key and value because the key is a string and the value is an integer and you can see here it's a it's a string and it's an integer we can do this uh, pretty easily all right so that's good and that's going to add into the count list since this is the count variable which is instantiation of the count list all right so now we can just have to do i plus plus and i think we'll be set for that um, now let's go ahead and do the sort function since we can now use it, uh, sort that sort. I'm gonna say sort that reverse. This is the way you do it with uh, descending order. If you don't want to do descending order, you can get rid of sort that reverse. So sort that reverse would be count. And now we can. I think we can uh, print line this uh, count object, and it's gonna show. So let's go ahead and do FMT that print line and we're gonna say uh, count let's make sure we get rid of all the other FMT print lines okay all right so this should sort it and let's go ahead and see all right so nice we got it set up pretty well so yogurt 18 flatbread pepperoni pizza 7 honey turkey and Swiss wrap 7 so now this is more beautiful right you get everything uh for your everything in descending order it's nice it's encapsulated inside of an object 
Um, all right, so now we can move on to the data visualization part, which is uh, a, not tricky. You just have to follow along in the uh, the GitHub repo. Is this a uh, library actually inspired me to make this video? It's super beautiful. So what you can do is you can just make charts um, very easily generated as an HTML file. And it's quite beautiful because it's got like 3D charts, uh, animations, and uh, you know, I'm not at the level where I can do these animations yet, but we're just going to stick to the first example they give us just to show off how, how easy it is. So uh, if you guys don't know what a Git mod is, I recommend you guys um, understand what it is. It's, it's a way to handle your packages that you install from a third party source. So uh, what you have to do is uh, use go mod and you have to use this command. but before you use this command, you actually have to do uh, go mod init. So we're going to say go mod init and we're going to say github.com Fabio Seps and we're going to say, uh, I don't know, data visualization Golang. All right, and now if we look at our files, actually we can look at uh, Visual Studio Code. There's our go mod right there. And I'm not sure why that's uh, red. Okay, it's whatever. So now we're gonna run that command. Copy that, paste that, and should now be inside of your Go mod. If you look in your Go mod, you can see there it is. It's uh, the third-party library from GitHub. And if you see your Go sum, um, pretty much all of these uh, dependencies or I guess packages are what this package is, uh, uses to to uh, function correctly. So it's like a dependency tree, right? This is the, I guess this is the root and these are all of its children because they the root needs all these uh, dependencies to work. So that's the go sum. It's a pretty cool way to manage your dependencies and packages. So uh, let's go back up and now we have to, all right, yeah, we put that in there. Uh, these are already inside of our imports thanks to that. Um, and now we can start working with the repo. So once you uh, do the installation, uh, let's go ahead and just copy what they do here. So first off, they make a bar, create a new bar instance. So we can just copy and paste that. Uh, let's go ahead and say data visualization part. Let's go ahead. Visualization. Again create a new bar instance and then I think we have to set a X axis so we can say bar dot set axis I'm sorry bar dot set X no wonder I was like why isn't my autocomplete working all right so set axis it's gonna be a string and these x axes, uh, if you can see here in the way they did it, it's going to be like the days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, through all the way through Sunday. Uh, however, we don't want that because we don't want the days of the week. We want the, um, let's see, we want the, the key value pairs. So if I run, go run that mean go, we want these guys. We want yogurt, we want honey, turkey, and Swiss wrap, flatbread pepperoni and pizzas. So uh, the way to do that is we're going to go ahead and set this string of those values. And the way it will be uh, implemented is we go ahead and get our count list object and we're going to go ahead and uh, index it at zero. And we're going to say dot value. I'm sorry, dot key, because dot key is a string. And we're going to do a string slicing here because uh, this library here, if the string is more, if the length is greater than like seven, I believe it just messes up the charts a little bit. The spacing and everything gets a little too crazy. So if this Monday or Tuesday was more than seven, it's going to be a hard time for the program to work. So we had to string slice it, unfortunately. So that's what we did. Uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to say zero to four. And then we're just going to copy and paste this uh, five times since this is going to get the, the most popular items of uh, that were retrieved in the dumpster dives. It's going to be the top five. 
So gonna be the top five items. And there we go, our x-axis is set. Um, what else do we have to do? I think we have to do add series. I believe it's add series. Uh, let's see, we can look at the, uh... oh yeah, it's add series, okay. So we just do dot add series. Huh, not sure why. Let's just do it this way. So in add series, it's going to be um, a category A, generate bar items. Okay. So we can say this is going to be our values. And then we're going to say generate bar items. Of course, we don't have it uh, set up yet. We didn't do a generate bar items yet, but we're going to do it eventually. Uh, and what else? Let's see. Okay, so that's going to be for later. Let's get rid of generate bar items or let's get take care of that. So generate bar items is a item that, reta that returns ops.bar data type, okay? And it's gonna be in a form of a string. So uh, let's get to work on this. Let's say above our func main, we can say generate func generate bar items. And then we're gonna give it a return type of ops.bar data. Okay. And then here we actually want to pass in our, our count list. So we're going to say data. It's going to be count list. Okay. So let's just see. In in this data, we want to return offset bar data, and we're going to have to get just the value. We don't want this key. We want the value. So let's go ahead and say. Uh, thinking do we even need this bracket I don't think we need that bracket and it's yeah okay so we're fine all right so we're gonna say bar data it's gonna be a, a list of integers which is gonna be the values and we're just gonna make it empty for now it's actually it's a slice I'm sorry my my re uh, references to Python and JavaScript may be kind of cringy for people who are good at Golang but I apologize for that so we're going to say another variable. Yeah, we're going to make another variable. It's going to be uh, an array of bar data, upset bar data. And it's going to have a length of zero for now. I think that's the length. Yeah, I think. Not sure. Uh, yeah. All right, we'll just roll with that for now. Uh, and then we have to do a for loop. So for i is equal to zero i is less than or equal to four since we're getting the top five go ahead and do i plus plus and we're going to go ahead and do bar data equals append bar data and we want to get our count list that we have as an argument and we're going to say data at i and we're going to say dot value so that appends all the values into bar data and that should be set. So bar data has the top five values inside of our count list, which should be 18, 7, 7, 5, and 5. So that's good. All right. So now we're going to have to do, uh, let's see, 4. We're going to have to go through this bar data now, actually. So range bar data. Oops, forgot the G. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna say items is gonna be equal to append items, and it's gonna be ops bar data. Can't see anything. Ops bar data, and within here it's gonna be our value, and this is all um, following the structure of the GitHub repo. Let's see if we can open it up. Let's see. Generate bar items, items equals appends. Yeah, so I just copied the, the logic from the GitHub repo, but I made sure it works with um, our count list. So if I go to main.go, um, I think we're, we'll be set with this logic right here. Now all we have to do is return items, and I think 
we will be fine. Alright guys, we're almost there. Our generate bar items should be done. Let's go ahead and make it so you guys can see everything more easier. Our generate bar items should be uh, functioning well. Uh, let's go ahead and go to here <coughs> and render this out. So we're at the last hole of the program. If you see in the repo, after they set the axes, they just uh, use the OS module to create the HTML file and then they render it into the file. So let's go ahead and do that. Since we already use F as for the file to open the CSV file, we're going to use E and then we can just not use that since it's probably not going to be an error. It's going to be os.create and then we're going to say um, Brooklyn data that HTML and then after that we're gonna say bar dot render and say e and then I think we'll be fine after that guys uh, let's go ahead and run this and see if it works now if it does work we should have the Brooklyn data that HTML I'm not sure why it's already there maybe when I save it it ran I'm not sure <laughs> what the heck type of sorcery is this but uh yeah I think it ran let's uh let's check it out let's check it out so the way to check it out is we go into our directory here we open this up and there we go guys we have a we have a chart we also have to set up a title and a subtitle actually guys let's do that first um sorry about that I think I skipped a step here yeah okay so bar that set global options let's go ahead and copy that so the title for me it's gonna be um, Brooklyn food waste data and we're gonna say food recovered from dump dumpster dives All right, so let's save that and let's run this again. And then let's go check out the um, let's go check out the chart. Awesome. So we have a nice title, we have a subtitle, we have the uh, the keys right here, and unfortunately, you know, it's going to be hard to tell what foods they are. Thankfully, we have this uh, count list object that actually tells us yogurt, honey turkey, and Swiss wrap flatbread. So maybe adding keys would be awesome to know like yogu is yogurt honey is honey flatbread whatever um but this is how you do data visualization in go and with more digging into the go eat charts library i th or module i think you guys could really make some awesome things this is just like the tip of the iceberg but thank you guys for watching i hope that uh that was entertaining and subscribe for more coding tutorials